What up guys, Eric for Beat Sonic again. Today we have an AP1 Tesla and we're gonna be installing the phone mirroring system on this car just like we did to the Model X AP2. This one's gonna be a little bit different so I'm gonna walk you guys through it. Before we get started, let me go over the contents with you because I didn't have a chance to go through it in detail on the other video. So what you're looking at over here in the box, this is the HDMI interface that actually has the the ability to make the video from your phone, your HDMI in, and it will come out with the correct resolution and aspect ratio to show beautifully on your Tesla screen. And this one over here is a CAN bus controller. So this is how we're going to make the menu button on the steering wheel control, do the switching to the video input from your backup camera. So that's at the top. And if you just go to the bottom here, you'll see some cables. There's going to be two camera cables um, the long one, the short one. Short one's used for the AP2 vehicles. The longer ones is used for the AP1. So we're going to be using the longer one today. And then you'll also find this plug here that plugs into the OBD2 port. And this cable is going to give the power and also give the CAN signals to switch the video input mode from the backup camera to this HDMI input interface mode. We have another harness here that's going to connect between all the devices that we have. So let's go ahead and just connect it right now. So we have this HDMI interface and we're going to use the longer cable. So just match the colors, it's all color coded. Right there, right here. And then on the other side here, we're going to connect this six pin connector. This guy over here. Okay, and let's grab this blue box. And on the blue box, there's um, a connector that has more pins. Okay, and just go ahead and just match the, the fitting connector to it. Everything should clip in seamlessly, nothing is forced. So if you need to force something in, something's not right. So make sure you have the right connector in and at the right angle as well. Okay, everything goes in seamlessly and you have these power connectors here that's going to connect onto the interface from the can. like that okay there's gonna be some extra wires not gonna be used which is this orange one here and these other two wires so a total of three wires is not gonna be used this one is for the 360 surround camera that you can also add in as an option that if you like uh, we're gonna have that available in the future but because we don't have that this is all empty we're going to cover all this with electric tape and then all we need to do on the car side is connect the OBD2 connector here and find the backup camera harness and we are going to daisy chain these two. So let's go ahead to the car and start it. All right guys, so once you get in the car, first step we wanna do is locate the OBD2 pin, which is over here, and grab the OBD2 connector on the kit and you'll go ahead and just plug into it. So it's gonna be the female side plugging into it. Okay, and once it's plugged, we're gonna test to make sure this thing is working. So we're gonna go back to the menu button and hold and then we should be hearing a click. There you go. That click sound that you hear is doing the switch over between the backup camera and the video input. So now that we confirm that it's working, now we're going to look for this backup camera cable which should be located behind this door sill over here. It's all one piece that's connected with the kick panel on the driver's side. We're gonna pull this out and we're gonna find this connector. So we'll do that now. Okay, it helps to remove the OBD2 connector for now again, since that we tested it, just so we have more room to work with. Once you get behind the kick panel, go ahead and look around here. You'll find a series of video cables that look similar to the connectors that's on our harness. And as you can see, we already identified the backup camera harness. It's this one right here, we pulled it out. You might need small hands to do this, but you're gonna have to pull back behind it push in the clip and then pull it out towards the car. And once we did that, we have it over here. And then next thing we wanna do is we're gonna kinda daisy chain this between our harness and everything will click in effortlessly, just like that. Once again, you will not have to force anything. So we have all that connected. And then let's once again 
test to make sure everything is working. Connect our OBD2 connector back on. Okay, and next, we're going to turn on the backup camera on the menu, and then we're gonna hold and press the menu button. Okay, you see that switching right there? That means it's waiting for a video signal to come in. So we are going to connect this Apple piece. Okay, using the supplied HDMI cable and also the additional components that you had to purchase separately. Okay, just connect all this just for testing. All right, there you go. And once we have it confirmed, now all we have to do is organize all the wires, put the panel back, and that's it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're gonna be placing this box behind this panel over here. So first go ahead and take the side panel off like this. Let's disconnect this piece. And loosen some clips to get back here. Okay, so we loosen three clips. There's one more clip down there that if you wanna loosen, you can go ahead and do that, but it's not necessary. So what I did was I grabbed this HDMI cable and I squeezed it under this panel right here. And since we have a crack, just go ahead and push it in through from the bottom where my hand is, right here. And then now that it's wired through, you could actually move this all the way to the side. It's a lot of room where we can route it through. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and organize all these guys. And we are gonna get some double-sided tape and we're going to tape this on that frame right here that you see and organize both this interface box and the blue canvas box. In addition to taping it, we went ahead and zip tied it as well just so that it won't move. Now we're just going to tuck in all the wires. Okay, we're just tucking in the wires, cleaning it up a bit. Okay, and now we just have an HDMI cable sticking out of there. Like this, we're getting power from our USB. All right, well that finalizes our installation. If you wanna see a demonstration on how this works, check out our other video demonstrating this product which works for both iPhone and Android. And once again, this device is compatible with all Model X and Model S. If you have any questions, drop a line below. Email us at info at and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.